I'm going to compare a $2,000 14-inch MacBook Pro with a $2,000 Mac Studio? Hey everybody and welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and smash that notification icon so you don't miss a single video. Now here I've got a kind of an interesting thing that popped up. In another video on the Mac Studio, someone had posited the question of what was a better buy, the $2,000 Mac Studio or a $2,000 14-inch MacBook Pro. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through what you get for your $2,000 with each of these machines and try to give you some semblance of a recommendation on what I think is best. But also, I absolutely want to hear from all of you in the audience on this video, which do you think is a better buy? So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. This all begins with a silicon on the inside. And with the Mac Studio at the $2,000 price point, you are getting an M1 Max processor, which is a 10-core CPU as well as a 24-core GPU. With the 14-inch MacBook Pro, this guy starts off at $2,000 with the M1 Pro processor on the inside, which is an 8-core CPU and a 14-core GPU. So initially, out of the gate, that's going to be one of your differences. An 8-core machine over here with the MacBook Pro versus a 10-core machine and a 14-core GPU against a 20 four core GPU. So that's already going to tell you the difference in performance that the Mac Studio is offering at the same price point. Besides that, the M1 Max inside of the Mac Studio has additional video encode and decode engines where there's only a single set of those on the M1 Pro. The M1 Max has basically double the video encode and decode engines. So if video is your thing, you're going to notice a substantially better performance here with the Mac Studio. The Mac Studio comes equipped with 32 gigs of RAM with that base configuration at $2,000 and that $2,000 14-inch MacBook Pro comes with only 16 gigs of RAM. Good news, both machines start off with 512 gigs of SSD storage. Since you're here, if I could borrow your attention for just a second, I've got to thank our sponsor for this video, Moco. If you are looking for a great case for your Apple device, check out Moco. Moco has a bunch of fun options that are both protective, functional, and stylish. One of my favorites is also their screen protectors. Their paper feel screen protectors are awesome. Not only does it protect the screen of your iPhone, but it gives it a paper-like texture surface with a 3H anti-scratch rating, has anti-glare capabilities, and it is highly responsive as you use your iPad. It makes it look great and it's perfect for being paired with an Apple Pencil. Here are a couple of their other new cases for the latest generation iPad Air. These guys are slim as well as functional. You can easily prop it up and use it to display your iPad, but they're also nice and slim at the same time. This pink has a cool shimmery surface to it, which is pretty unique in the case market, but I also love the more protective version that actually has a built-in screen protector itself and a little house for your Apple Pencil. It's really easy to insert into the case and you have even more protection than other cases that are out there. Plus, it can still run roll up in the back and be used to prop up as an easel for writing or drawing, or the other way for any viewing of your content, watching movies, anything like that. They have a full range of cases in various styles for all versions of iPad, so be sure to go check them out. If you want any links, there are some down below for Moco and all of their iPad cases. Thanks again to Moco for sponsoring this video. So what do those differences in processors mean in terms of performance? Well, M1 Pro and M1 Max both are effectively the same in terms of their architecture and clock speed. So the single core scores are going to be pretty much the same between these two machines. We got a 1798 on the M1 Max Mac Studio and I got a 1769 on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. The single core speeds going to be the same. So any single core task that you're undertaking, things like launching applications, moving around between apps, a lot of stuff like that that are single core tasks, those are going to feel very fluid and similar across both of these machines. 
It's only when you get into more complicated tasks and things that are multi-core tasks that are more intensive. Things like high-end video production and video encoding, um, coding, programming, stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of times where you're gonna need a multi-core performance. And that's where the Mac Studio comes in because it is a 10-core machine versus only an eight-core. In the Geekbench 5 multi-core tests, we did see that lead going from a 9942 on the 14-inch M1 Pro to a 12822. So a substantial improvement, 20 or so percent more, which is again what you'd expect going from an eight to a 10-core CPU, a roughly 20-25% increase in that multi-core performance because of the two additional cores in that processor. There's also a huge leap in terms of graphics performance. So if you are looking at anything with games, yeah, there are games on the Mac. Or if you're doing anything with video production, coding, anything that can tap into that graphics engine, a lot of high-end photo editing, very large raw photos processing through Photoshop and Lightroom, stuff like that, tapping into that GPU, you're going to have a much, much, much better time on the Mac Studio, just because again, we're simply going from a 14 to a 24 core GPU, and that is a substantial jump in that GPU. So what about ports with these two machines? And what about external video support? I think that's also a thing to take into consideration. So if we look at the Mac Studio here, this guy along the back, you have four Thunderbolt 4 ports, along with a 10 gigabit ethernet port, got your Mickey Mouse power connector there. Then you have two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, as well as a headphone jack. But don't forget on the front, you have two additional ports that you can utilize. You have two USB-C ports, and then you have one SDXC card reader. Whereas if we take a look at our 14 inch MacBook Pro over here, it too has an SDXC card reader, which is great. You have an HDMI output, fantastic, but you're limited to only three Thunderbolt 4 ports. I always said, even before the Mac Studio came out, I wish there were four Thunderbolt 4 ports, but there are only three. Then you have a headphone jack and you have the MagSafe 3 connector, which is Really nice way to connect and charge up your Mac. Has things like fast charge abilities to give you half charge in a very short amount of time. This guy is great. Of course, you have a battery in here because it is a portable machine compared to the Mac Studio that is not. So what are you missing out on ports there? Well, you have an additional Thunderbolt port, which we talked about on the Mac Studio, and you have those additional USB ports. I think those are the big thing. But then you have the two additional Type-Cs on top of that. So you have a whole lot more ports on the Mac Studio, but I'm not saying that should be the end all be all because you can add a dock to either of these machines and supplement it with additional ports that they may not have built in. So that is an option to make up some ground between these two machines. For external displays, the Mac Studio with the M1 Max processor can run four 6K displays as well as an additional fifth display over HDMI at 4K. While the M1 Pro in the 14 inch MacBook Pro is only capable of running two external 6K displays. But you have to remember the fact that it does have a built in display that you also can take advantage of. So this is a ProMotion Liquid Retina XDR display. It's got a 254 PPI, very high resolution retina quality display, uh, 600 nits of peak brightness, 1000 nits of sustained brightness, and a million to one contrast ratio. When you are looking at what display to use with the Mac Studio, the MacBook Pro has a great display built in and it's near impossible to find an external display with as good qualities. You're not gonna find a you know, ProMotion display with super great HDR support and all the other benefits of an Apple display easily in an external display. I mean, even the studio display that I love does not support full HDR or the same amount of brightness. The next level up, you're looking at the Pro Display XDR, which doesn't have ProMotion at that point. So it's a bit of a toss up, but this is a smaller screen. It is a 14 inch screen, whereas you can get larger screens with the Mac Studio. So there's a, there's a whole lot of categories and it depends on what's important to you on what you're looking for to use as a, as a display, whether you like this liquid retina with the ProMotion and the fun things like that, or whether you want something that's larger but you may not have as good uh, quality contrast ratio or ProMotion support.
A few other differences between these guys, of course, the MacBook Pro has a built-in camera, 1080p, FaceTime camera in there, which is amazing. Uh, there is no built-in camera on the Mac Studio. This has some pretty solid speakers built in for a laptop, including things support for spatial audio. This has a speaker built in. Don't listen to it if you can avoid it. Like it, it's, it's tinny and small, and you should really use something else. This is gonna be sitting underneath your desk. It's like nice to have as an option, but I don't mind listening to the MacBook Pro speakers, the built-in ones in the Mac Studio. I just don't want to listen to for much period of time, but it's a, it's a good backup should you need it. So which of these is a better buy? It's a hard question to answer. And obviously as a desktop versus a laptop, portability is going to be important. You have a big difference in what your trade-offs here. You are, you are um, compromising a lot on your performance to get this portable machine with a built-in display and keyboard ready to go. With the Mac Studio, you have to provide a display and your keyboard and mouse, but you and you can't take it anywhere, but you have so much more performance baked in. You have double the RAM, the memory, out of the gate, as well as two additional CPU cores and almost double the number of GPU cores. So you have a lot more performance coming out of the Mac Studio, let alone the crazy number of ports contained on this thing. So there is a big difference between these two machines in terms of performance. And it's hard for me to say, yes, absolutely get the, the desktop because it's more powerful. That's always gonna be the case. But what I would say is depending on your workload, depending on your workload, I would lean towards the Mac Studio if you're generally in the office, right? If you're, if you're often tied or tethered to a desk, get the Mac Pro or the Mac Studio rather and supplement it with an iPad of sorts that you can still use for a lot of tasks, but do most of your work on the Mac Studio. That's where I would lean if I had roughly that $2,000 to spend on these two machines, just because you do get so much more out of the Mac Studio, but the portability and form factor of the MacBook Pro is also hard to beat. I would not judge any of you for choosing one of these or the other. It's going to be very dependent, but I think it's interesting to see that these are two machines that cost the same amount of money, and there are compromises in what you get. So I wanna know what you guys think. If you had 2,000 bucks, which one would you rather buy? Which one would suit you best? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you wanna grab either of these, I've started to gather deals for each of them and I put them in the description and pin them in the comments. Otherwise, stay tuned. Got a whole lot more videos coming your way.